Welcome to Parkinson's A Caregiver's Journey. We have developed this webinar with the hope of providing you with information, helpful tips and tools as the care partner of a loved one with Parkinson's disease. And importantly, to let you know that you are not alone in your caregiver's journey. This webinar has been made possible with the funding support of Teva Pharmaceuticals. During this webinar, you will hear some real life experiences from care partners who are walking in the same shoes you are, caring for someone with Parkinson's disease. I think you will see a lot of yourself in their stories. I'm John Shaw. Chief Executive Officer of the Caregiver Action Network. CAN is the nation's leading nonprofit association supporting family caregivers across the country, providing them with the support and information they need to meet the challenges they face every day. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder of the nervous system that affects movement. Approximately 60,000 Americans are newly diagnosed with Parkinson's disease each year. And this number does not even reflect the thousands of cases that go undetected. In the United States, as many as 1 million people live with Parkinson's disease. How many is that? Well, that's more than the combined number of people with multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, and Lou Gehrig's disease. In fact, Parkinson's disease is second only to Alzheimer's as the most common neurological condition in America. Not only is the number of Parkinson's patients increasing, but then so is the number of family caregivers who are living with someone with Parkinson's. So now let's go ahead and listen to some real life care partners and hear how they began this journey of caregiving. When people think of Parkinson's, they think of tremors and those noticeable things that come with Parkinson's disease. But we wanted to ask our partners, what was the first thing that led you to believe something was wrong with your loved one? I had, there was no exposure, it was nothing but a gait problem with my husband. So Parkinson's would have been the last thing I would have ever thought about. And again, at 46 years of age, that's not something you think about. Doctored for months, trying to figure out what it was until finally there was a doctor that diagnosed him. I saw my husband's picture in a newspaper. He was with five high school science winners for New York State. And everyone else was smiling, but he wasn't. Uh -huh. And I said, Jim, were you okay that day? Yeah, I was okay. But then, he wasn't okay. He was slow answering, slow moving. What's important about Parkinson's disease is that treating Parkinson's requires a team approach. It really isn't just a matter between the patient and the doctor, but includes others and especially family members. And you, as a care partner, are a critical part of your loved one's health care team. And it's important that both your loved one and their doctors understand that you need to be a part of that health care team. It's important for you as the care partner to be a member of the health care team because that's what leads to more positive outcomes for your loved one with Parkinson's. But what does it really mean for you as the care partner to be a member of the healthcare team? Well, there are responsibilities that you as the family caregiver can handle better than anyone, including the patient themselves or their doctor. You're with your loved one 24 hours a day. So you're in the best position to watch for developing symptoms as Parkinson's progresses you're in the best position to watch for side effects of medications. And you're in one of the best positions to make sure that medications are taken and taken on time. So let's ask our care partners on how their loved one coped 
with the diagnosis once they were diagnosed with Parkinson's. When Jim had the original diagnosis of clinical depression, and then he had those three different antidepressants and went to different uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, and neurologists, and then movement disorder specialists, and the last psychiatrist and psychologist told him, you were never clinically depressed. You really had Parkinson's the whole right. time. My husband was really relieved. My husband denied it for quite a few years. We were just in shock. We came home and absolutely just looked at each other and said, Parkinson's, wow. And then as I said, he denied it. He worked for a few years and the only way he could handle it was that he would not tell anybody. Once the symptoms have begun, and perhaps even before diagnosis, your caregiver's journey has also begun. Here are 10 tips for family caregivers that can help you on your journey. During the course of this webinar, we'll be talking about some of these. For instance, how to seek support from other caregivers. That caregiving is hard work, and so it's important to take respite breaks often and how to organize medical information so that it's up to date. It is important to take care of your own health so that you can be strong enough to take care of your loved one and to accept offers of help. One way to do that is to suggest specific things that people can do to help you. Realizing that you need help is not a sign of weakness or failure. Providing the best possible care for your loved one sometimes means that you are physically and mentally tapped out, that you've reached your limit, and that you need help to do it. I want to call your attention to tip number six and watching out for signs of depression. The fact is, family caregivers are much more likely to suffer depression than non-family caregivers. And if you're a wife caring for your husband, you are actually six times more likely to suffer depression than a non-caregiving wife. So it's vital to watch for those signs of depression and make sure that you're getting the help you need if you're gonna be suffering from depression. Finally, let's all take a moment and just look at tip number 10. Give yourself credit for doing the best you can in one of the toughest jobs there is. I think caregivers beat themselves up because they think they can't do this or they can't do that. And it's very hard for them to realize that perhaps they can't do it. But uh, again, they need to know that they're doing the best they can and find someone who perhaps can help them do what they can't do. Right. No, totally agree. I experienced that. I had to put my husband in a veteran's home eventually. He was six foot two, about 180 pounds, and when he fell, I could not get him up. I literally could not get this gentleman up. Sometimes I would have, now this sounds really terrible, I would have to drag him to get him to a chair where I could get him up. True. So when it got to be so bad that I could not do any more, I did have to mm -hmm. have him put in a veteran's home. And I will tell you one thing, in Pennsylvania, it is a, it's a state veteran's home. Was the best thing I ever did in my life. I have never seen care that was as good. Yes, so I, I was just very fortunate mm -hmm. in that situation, but they were amazing to him. He was there about six months and then he passed away. I just couldn't do it anymore. There was just no way. The best way to function effectively as a member of the healthcare team is for you as the care partner to create and maintain a comprehensive file of information about your loved one with Parkinson's disease. So let's talk a minute about what it means to make a patient file. A patient file should include all of the relevant medical information so that you have it all in one place. That's the personal medical record, obviously the contact information for the doctor or doctors, all the medications that your loved one is taking, 
and certainly every bit of health history in terms of surgeries and other medical conditions. The fact is, those with Parkinson's disease often suffer multiple chronic conditions. They have other illnesses as well. And they may well, in fact, have more than one doctor. So it's important that the patient file put all that together in one place. Your loved one and you as the care partner may be the only ones who know all of the doctors involved, all the medications involved for all the conditions that your loved one is facing. And that's why all that medical information has to be in one central file. Make sure too that the patient file includes every bit of relevant insurance information. If your loved one is on Medicare, make sure that information is there or any private medical insurance. If you have long-term care insurance, even though you're not using it now, make sure you have it ready and available in one place. And even with other conditions, not really related necessarily to the Parkinson's, such as dental and vision, just keep all of that insurance in one place in the patient file. We often find that one of the most neglected parts of the patient file is making that your legal documents are in order. This takes a little bit of work, but believe me, it saves a lot of time and trouble down the line. The type of legal documents that should be in your patient file, certainly a living will, if your loved one has one, and any attorney contact information. What's very important for both your loved one and you as the care partner is to have a power of attorney for health care decisions. You will also need to have a power of attorney for financial decisions. It's important to make sure that you understand that these are two separate documents. A legal document that gives you power of attorney for health care decisions won't help you one bit when you're trying to get access to bank accounts. And a power of attorney for finances to get access to bank accounts won't help you one bit when it comes to making health care decisions if you're called upon to do that for your loved one. So those are two separate documents and they need to be up to date and in order. Actually, that's another thing a caregiver should know about is the medicines. Let's spend a few minutes to talk about medication mishaps because this is actually one of the most common, but also one of the most preventable areas of problems. When are medication problems most likely to occur? Medication mishaps are most likely to occur when people are using multiple pharmacies. You may go to more than one pharmacy to get your prescriptions filled, but it's important that if you do, that all of those pharmacies know the total number of medications that your loved one is taking. Because in fact, most Parkinson's patients do take multiple medications. They may be taking Parkinson's medication, but also medications for other chronic conditions. And even now, as more Parkinson's medications become available, now for instance for hallucinations and other irrational behaviors, they may be taking more than one Parkinson's medication. Medication mishaps also occur at the time the prescription is written. It's important that both the patient and you as the care partner understand what the prescription is for and exactly how and when that medicine should be taken. Medication mishaps often occur as well when the prescription is filled or refilled. And it's at that time in refilling a prescription that you wanna make sure with the pharmacist that no occurrences of errors are happening. The medication is such an important thing to always check with your neurologist on what you should take or whatever. Another area to prevent medication problems really rests on your shoulders as a care partner. And that is specifically when there are changes in the medical condition. So let us say, for example, that your loved one with Parkinson's now has some other health issue or has to go to the hospital. It's those changes in medical condition when medication problems are most likely to occur. And especially in that transition point from the hospital back to the home. So if your loved one with Parkinson's has a fall or for some other reason has to go to the hospital, 
perhaps for some other condition unrelated to Parkinson's. And when you're making the transition back to home, we have found statistically that's where medication problems are most likely to occur. And you, as the care partner, are in the best position to be watching that situation and asking questions. If, because of those situations, your loved one is now seeing multiple doctors and not just the neurologist because of the Parkinson's, you want to make sure that you are conveying to all of the doctors involved the totality of the health situation for your loved one. Happens. He has a headache and all of a sudden you think, well, maybe I need to give him Advil. And perhaps Advil won't work with the drug he's taking. To stay with medication problems and how to prevent them for just one more minute, let's talk about some other matters that are critical for you as the care partner. We have found that up to 70% of the time, it's actually not the patient themselves who are managing the meds. That in fact, up to 70% of the time, it's the family caregiver who's managing the medications for them. So it's so important to make sure that the prescriptions are taken as directed and are taken at the time they need to be taken and with or without food as directed. It's also much more important than most people realize that the pharmacist be aware of any over-the-counter medications that your loved one is taking. It isn't a matter of just making sure they know what prescriptions the doctor has made for your loved one, but those over-the-counter medications, vitamins, supplements, herbal drugs that uh, your loved one is taking, because sometimes those can have interactions with the medications. So think about all those herbal supplements, all those vitamins, again, something that only you as the care partner is going to know about, the doctor probably doesn't know, and make sure the pharmacist knows about those as well. Now, we want to give you an idea of some tools that can help you do many of the things we've talked about. But most importantly, why it's so important for you to take care of yourself. You have to, if you don't take care of your own health, you're not going to be able to take care of Absolutely. someone else. You have to set priorities. Yeah. But as you say, the person who is dependent upon you, they're number one. But We've told you time and time again that it's important for you to take care of yourself, but we know it's always easier said than done. So here are just a few ideas of how to take care of yourself. Get some rest. Make sure that you're eating healthy. You're paying attention to the diet of your loved one with Parkinson's. You've got to make sure that you're paying attention to your nutrition needs as well. Try to find some time to exercise. We know how difficult it can be. And don't forget to visit your own doctor. And I say this especially if you're a male family caregiver of a loved one with Parkinson's, because those of us who are men are pretty bad at wanting to make sure we get to the doctor ourselves. The bottom line, nothing is more important than this. You have to stay strong yourself so you can stay strong enough to care for your loved one with Parkinson's. I think a caregiver especially need some time alone or some time with friends, however it is. So it's always helpful to be able to have friends who will come in, maybe stay with that person, talk to them for a while, and you get away from the situation. Because if you don't, after 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, sometimes you lose your patience. And it's not because you mean to, but it's because everything is just built up. Your friends, yeah. Your friends, your family, hopefully. And your family, yeah. yeah. But and especially your real friends. Yeah, you know who your real friends are. That's yeah. right. You find out very quickly when you, when you are a caregiver who your real friends are. Take an honest moment with yourself right now and think, how are you taking care of yourself? If you're like most family caregivers, you're probably not doing a very good job at all of taking care of yourself. You're doing a wonderful job of taking care of your loved one with Parkinson's, but you're probably neglecting yourself. So how can you take care of yourself? 
Remember, we mentioned this in the 10 tips. We want you to seek support from those around you who can help. You probably find that people are always asking you, how can I help? And they're making an offer. Sometimes, frankly, that can be annoying because you've heard so many general offers of help that you really don't know how to take advantage of. One way to take advantage of that is to think and list specific things that people can do for you. So when they offer to help, you can come back with one or two specific things that they can do for you. Also, I run two support groups and I find that caregivers just coming to a support group, maybe the patient won't come, is enough for them to know that they're not alone you are not alone. Millions of Americans are in the same boat as a caregiver of a loved one with Parkinson's. Some famous and some not so famous. Whether you're a new family caregiver or whether you've been doing it for years, like the millions of others, you will experience many different emotional and physical challenges. You'll feel anger sometimes, anxiety, depression, fatigue, disturbed sleep, Frankly, all of these are results of caregiving. To understand that you are not alone in feeling any of these is key because they happen all the time. And what's important to know and the good news is that there are many resources available to help you with these feelings you may have on your journey. Get the materials from all the National Parkinson's organizations. Tell people, network. Network with people and share that information. Here are just a few very valuable resources that you can turn to. Start with more of CAN's free resources for some of those feelings you may have that we talked about. Anxiety, depression, disturbed sleep. At caregiveraction.org, you'll find help to deal with those feelings. And the major Parkinson's groups across the country have extremely good resources for you as caregivers, some of which are listed here. And we want to give you one last bit of advice on your caregiver's journey. I guard. The day we left, after the day before we spent six hours in the emergency room, when I was watering the plants in our kitchen, I saw I have a, a clivia. Uh, lily, it's a beautiful lily with large orange yellow flowers. And when I was watering it, I noticed a bud coming. And it was, you just showed the orange color. And I, I, I get my joy from uh, my gardening and birds and uh, taking my husband to concerts and he sings and I take him places now because he can't drive. And so I, I get my biggest joy from seeing that he's able to function and enjoy life. We hope you have found this webinar, Parkinson's, A Caregiver's Journey, to be helpful. We want to thank those who made this possible. And I want to start especially with our three family caregivers, Myra Hirshhorn, Nancy Hall, and Jerry Haynes, for their terrific contributions and their life experiences. We want to thank our friends at the Parkinson's Action Network, and a special thank you to Teva Pharmaceuticals for providing the financial support to Caregiver Action Network as a nonprofit to put this webinar together. We hope that this has been helpful in providing you with information, helpful tips, and tools during your caregiver's journey. And remember, more than anything else, you are not alone in this caregiver's journey as a loved one with Parkinson's. Thank you.